in-house in Bristol, in Connecticut. I'm not there. I'm still in Las Vegas. But these two guys are, and they're sharing a room. It's defending champion Daniel Cormier. How are you, Daniel? I'm pretty good, man. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you Cold for asking. <laughs> it's warm here in Vegas, so I, I got the short sleeve shirt on. It feels good out here. But yeah, Connecticut, I don't think it ever warms up <laughs> over on the East Coast. And AJ, we have Rumble Johnson, the taker of souls. How are you, AJ? I'm great, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. You a little tired? You don't sound like you have as much energy as DC, maybe. No, I'm cool. I'm just chilling, watching football. <laughs> You're relaxed. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the good view. The price is right on in front of me. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, they got they got you guys set up over there. What are they yeah. playing? They they're doing the plinko thing, or what's what's on right now? I don't know. It's just some good looking blonde lady in front of a blue car with a blue dress. Yeah, that sounds like Price is Right. That's the go. way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, you guys obviously rematch title fight. This this fight in a way sells itself. Do you guys feel like it's? Do you guys feel like there's a lot of heat behind this fight? You guys have both been in big fights before. Your first fight was very big. Obviously, everything that was going on with the 205-pound division. What's it been like promoting this one? Do you feel a buzz around it? I do. I think, uh, honestly, the fact that there hasn't been any fights for the last couple weeks in the UFC, I think it helps us, you know, because there, there, there are normally fights every week. So when there aren't fights, you start to, to kind of miss it, you know. So Rumble and I have the opportunity to be the first ones back inside the octagon from like a two to three week break so i think that helps us a little bit is it just me or have the ufc been asking you guys to promote this thing together a lot and it's not that that's rare i mean we've seen you know two guys who are fighting each other head up to uh, espn campus and do sports center together we've seen it happen but you know i just remember before ufc 206 when the fight was supposed to take place up in canada they had you doing the same it seems like they want you guys sitting next to each other it, do you guys get that feeling or, or not so much well, I mean, it feels normal to me what what we're, what we're doing. So it's not like they have us going here and there like they had Conor McGregor whenever he was facing Aldo and having had us doing had like they had them doing like what ten ten city tours or something like that, something crazy. So this this feels you know pretty normal for me. It's just we've done it so many times together now. You yeah. know, it's like you know we. we if we didn't fight each other in the streets the first time, we're not going to fight each other the seventh time. So I, mean, what, I think they're pretty pretty safe now. Is that what they want? Do they want you guys trash talking? Because you guys don't talk a lot of trash. That's that's what I also actually, is. I actually don't mind talking trash. I do all the time. Rumble said it yesterday. He said, I don't believe half the stuff I say, <laughs> which is crazy. I, I I mean, I believe everything I say. I can't believe it. I mean, I don't know why that guy, why he would question me. I thought you were going to say, which is crazy, because I don't believe 90% of what I say. I believe it all. That's the problem. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just, maybe I am nuts because I believe every single word of what I say. You know, being in the same room together, and you guys are pros, like you said, you didn't fight on the streets. You're not going to all of a sudden get into a brawl in our podcast booth. But have, has any, have either one of you said something, or I, I guess I'll, I'll phrase it this way. Has the other, has the other guy ever said something that you did take to heart that bothered you, that irritated you i know it's not going to have an effect on you in the fight necessarily or it's going to throw you off in, in one way or another but have you ever been like what don't say that you know have you ever been irritated by something the other guy said I, i'd probably have to be a better question for anthony because i'm all i'm the one always saying stuff you know he doesn't say much in, in that regard i'm no, the one that's always no, talking no 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 uh i like what daniel says you know um it shows that he is confident you know, and uh, he, he, is, he is a good promoter and things like that. But you know me, I keep my mouth closed and just I let it all soak in and, and do what I have to do the day that I have to fight. Well, one theme, it seems like, that maybe DC has been talking about, and DC, I'll let you put this into your own words, uh, you know, in case any of the viewers haven't heard it, hear it directly from your mouth. It seems like not necessarily accusing him of being an all-out quitter, but that he can be broken, that if the fight doesn't go his way, that you can take advantage of that as time goes on. Uh, what, what are you saying exactly about Anthony? Well, I, I do believe that that because of all those knockouts and because of, I mean, even the fact that Anthony has earned another title fight and won three fights in a row, but has only fought for seven minutes, lends itself to my, my view of how I, I see him as a fighter. I think he's a phenomenal fighter, but... After I watch him in there with guys that have stood up to him and, and lasted past the initial burst, they always find success. I and I'm not, I, you know, I don't lie. The only time I saw him actually carry a great fight for a long time was against Bill Davis. But 
Yeah, I do believe that if you put enough pressure on him and you withstand that that initial knockout barrage, you'll be fine. Is that a is that a mental thing that you're seeing in Anthony, or is it just a, a conditioning thing? Well, I mean, he carries a lot of muscle. You know, I used to wrestle a lot of guys that were big, muscular guys like that, and they always tended to get a little tired than I did if the pace was too high. Uh, but also just experiences. I mean, I don't know how many fights he's lost in his career, maybe five. And 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 he can always go back to those five fights and remember, man, do I really want to be this uncomfortable? And every time he's put in that situation, it goes in the direction of the other guy. Anthony, do you uh, do you have any problem being uncomfortable in a fight? Can you go 25 minutes if need be on at UFC 210? <laughs> We're going to find out, that's for sure. <laughs> he can go 25 minutes if we just stand around. He can't go 25 minutes fighting the way that I fight. Impossible. Anthony, everybody remembers what happened prior to the first time you fought DC. You were supposed to fight John Jones. That was in May of 2015. Jones got into legal issues. The entire uh, the entire dynamic of the fight changed for you. You went from John Jones to a uh, a wrestle heavy guy in DC. Now you've gotten the full camp. You know, I remember I, I was actually out there with you when Jones got in that legal issues, and I remember looking at your camp, and you had it very tailored to John Jones. You had long, lengthy kickboxers. Um, what did you do for this fight now that you knew that you were preparing for DC the entire time, a, a guy who's going to push the pace with the wrestling? Uh, Nothing. I just, I mean, I didn't bring anybody special in. I didn't do anything. I just was myself. I just went out there and I trained, and I did what I felt was best for me. So, uh... I mean, I didn't really do anything spectacular. You know, Brett, I kind of wonder why you guys do that. It's like this this, this theme that, you know, the opponent changed. Great. It did change. That is a 100% true statement. But do you guys realize that I wasn't even, I was barely getting ready to fight and prepare to fight Ryan Bader when I took this fight with Anthony the first time? It's not like I had a full training camp. It's not like I knew I was going to fight Rumble. It's not like I knew I was going to make weight and fight 25 minutes in three weeks. I don't understand why everybody's giving him this out that uh, the opponent changed, and he, but he still ended up having a full training camp. If anybody had the advantage, it was Anthony. Are you feeling a, a lack of love, DC? Are you, no, uh, I mean, I just I just don't understand. Like, every time I hear that question, I'm like, what is going on? Well, I think, you know, for all, I, I can speak personally that it is part of the story. It's part of the, the first fight that happened. Um, it doesn't take away anything of, of what you did. Um, but I do remember feeling for Anthony a little bit just because title shots are hard to come by. Um, you know, this division, if you get a couple knockouts, you can get right back into, into the title hunt like Anthony did. But you wait around, you win fights. It takes some time to get that title shot. And then when the opponent changes on you four month, four weeks out, I know that that's just part of the game, but it's it's tough. You know, it's tough to, to go on. A, on what, what How many fights did you win, Anthony? Nine fights in a row or something like that? And then yeah. you get your title shot against John Jones and then it's no longer there. Yeah. Mentally, Anthony, I remember you saying, Aunt John Jones, I don't care. You know, he is one of the greatest fighters, maybe the greatest fighter of all time. That would be great to fight him, but I don't care. I'm fighting for the belt. So nothing really changes but were you rattled at all mentally going into the first fight? Looking back, did it have what kind of effect did it have on you? Just that opponent change and, and facing, not getting to face John Jones after everything that he represented at the time. Well, whenever you have to have a change of opponent at the last minute like that, it definitely your mindset kind of changes. Your game plan has to change. Things that you worked on, your muscle memory for different things. It changes, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a fight. So it is what it is. You should be prepared for everything. DC, did you feel like you were going to to face Anthony again, um, whether it was right after the fight or, you know, any time after? Did you kind of feel like your paths were going to cross again? And were you excited about it? You know, we, we see at the sport right now, champions are calling out fights. They want big fights. Did you view a rematch with, with Rumble as a big fight? 110%. I knew that he would come back. Because, I mean, I've seen him fight these other guys. Those guys can't beat Anthony. I mean, they they just don't have the skill to beat him. You know, he knocks them all out, and I knew he would do it impressively. When he beat Gustafson in the way that he did, I knew that he would always be around the title. So, yeah, I knew it. And then, for me, it him knocking everybody out like that makes it great because people want to tune in to watch him fight. Go ahead. I'll be the other side of the fight. That's fine for me. 
How many how many big fights do you see out there for you beyond this one, DC? And I know that guys don't like to look ahead of what's past them. You got a big fight coming up this weekend, mm-hmm. but you you got Rumble, and then obviously you've got John Jones lingering out there. And again, I just turn to the fact that every champion is just so outspoken about who they want to fight. They want to move around weight classes. They want to go up. They want to go down. They want super fights. They want catch weight fights. They want all these things. You got these two. Do you see any beyond that? I, those 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 fights mean something to me. You know, like I just want to fight guys that mean something. Anthony Johnson, that's a fight that matters. That f- a fight matters to me. The fight with Jones, that matters. I don't think a fight with any of these other guys in the division would mean anything. I don't know if I could really prepare myself as I have for those guys. How do I know that, Brett? Because I go back to the Ryan Bader camp. This is before Ryan Bader and I had the issues. I wasn't even hardly starting to train by the time they called me, told me I was going to fight Rumble because I, I just couldn't really. I'm 38 years old. I was like, man, you know what? After losing to Jones, you know, I was setting myself up to, to have one of those trap fights. So... If the fights don't matter, I just won't do it. I'm not going to go in there and just fight guys just for the sake of fighting. So it's going to probably be Rumble and John until I'm done. Because after I beat Rumble this weekend, he'll just come back. He's going to beat everybody else. It's not like <laughs> it's not like that. those other guys are going to beat him. So it'll be like beat Rumble, beat Jones, beat Rumble, beat Jones. And that's what I'll be doing for as long as I'm fighting still. Huh. So you actually you, you think that potentially there's two fights left in your mixed martial arts career? Uh. I don't know, man. I'm not saying that I'm about to retire. I'm just saying that I just think those two guys in the division with myself, I, I think they're kind of above the other guys. Anthony has an ability to make fights that I have that are tough look super easy because of his knockout power. Mm-hmm. So he'll always look good against a lot of these dudes. Last thing I want to ask you, and I want to get both of your opinions on it, if both of you would answer it, please, is, is you get asked about John Jones all the time. What... I'm sure you're just used to it now, and so it's not like it necessarily gets you riled up or you're, you're angry about it. But do you feel at all disrespected? Do you feel? Do you roll your eyes when his name comes up? It, it happens in literally every interview. I just wonder, just from a, in, emotionally. Why, why are you asking? Me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask about him, about fighting him, about what he means, about where he's at in the division. I just want to know what it's like to get asked about a guy constantly that really has been unable to fight over the last two years. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me. I mean, John was a great champion, you know. Um, regardless of whatever happened, uh, so his name will always be around. Regardless, you know, he'll be known as the greatest light heavyweight of all time for sure. So it doesn't bother me. I, I expect it. You kind of expect it, but there's only one problem with Anthony's answer. I think we got to stop saying regardless of what happened. We know what happened. We know exactly what he did. So when we say stuff like, regardless of what happened, or we kind of don't state the facts, it's almost like we're sweeping it under the rug. We know what he did. We know the bad things that he did. We know that he tried to cheat. We know all this stuff. So it's like, I get annoyed because I'm like, why are you asking me about a guy that three days before we're supposed to fight, piss hot? That's the stuff that annoys me. Not Mm. the fact that he's a good fighter. No, he's a great fighter. But you cheated. You also smashed into somebody's car and ran away. I know what you did. If everybody else wants to ignore it, they can. I'm not. DC, I'll ask you one follow-up then. I I wanted to get your opinion on he's going to be in Buffalo, Mm -hmm. and you almost half expect that You know, he's going to be cleared to come back this summer, hopefully. Um, And if all goes well, we'll see him in the second half of of this year. He's going to be in Buffalo, and he's charging people to to hang out with him. He's he's got for ninety nine dollars. You can go meet John Jones. You can take a photo with him for one hundred forty (laughs) nine dollars. I think you can get two photos with him. You can jump the line in his. uh, I think he's having like some kind of after party on Saturday. Why Why would he be having an after party? Yeah, what do you think? Who came up with that idea? What do you think about John Jones? Genius team back there. I tell you that much. Put John Jones in an after party surrounded by alcohol. That's great. Great job, guys. That's yeah, smart. Do, what do you think about it? Do, do you mind? Do you mind him showing up, you know, when it's your show and it's your title fight and, and he's charging people, fans, to hang out with him on the side? I think it's desperate, but I don't care. I, I don't I don't care. I really don't care that he's in Buffalo because he's still not eligible to fight. You know, he got that, that year thing from USADA, right? And uh, he got a year suspension. And there's this misconception that USADA believed his excuse. They did not believe his excuse. They gave him the max amount of time that they could.